doing a special now, like uh, in the year 2024, the podcast circuit has to be worse than the late night or the old promotion, right? I feel that, you know, it's funny because, um, uh, you know, I, I never had a podcast and I know you guys like, you know, this is your thing. This is what you do. Well, you know, we're not excited about it. Most of us no, are. No, like, I, I think you guys, the, the, the thrill is gone. Oh, yeah. And now you're all adults. So you got like yeah. wives and girlfriends yeah. and like, you know, you got a, a place and a dog and all that. So like, it's not this kind of like, you know, hey, man, we're going to like hang out. Sorry, there's like dirty underwear. You yeah. know, it's like, you know, you guys have grown Sorry, up. Sorry, let me finish this beer and then yeah, we'll start that's, talking that's about. That's done. That's yeah. done. Now it's just pleasant conversations for other people to listen to. Well, it's also like when I was out in L.A., you know, I did uh, Bert and Tom, sure. Two Bears, and uh, Mark Marin. You know, these guys, yeah. I know these guys. They're really cool to help me promote. But it was, like, the worst weather. And I'm driving a rental car through, like, flooding conditions. And I'm, yeah. like, dying to do podcasts. Like, I'm dying. Actually, <laughs> I might die doing a podcast. You know? Yeah, the way old sailors would lose you their know, lives to find But in L.A., land. that's, like, a righteous death. Like, yeah. Hey, he was going to a podcast. He had to go, you know. <laughs> Give him a 21 retweet salute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're going to do. So, I, uh, you know, I mean, I'm glad to, like, you know, I don't know how you guys do it. I think it's uh, a lot of work. To I mean, do these things. what's great about this is, uh, you know, Mike does a lot. He does the actual work. And I just sit here and talk to my friends. So it's not. Well, that's cool. I can't complain about this. And you get to do it from your house. Yeah, I just do it right from home. And this is a one-two punch for me because I have a very dear friend right across the street, Dwayne Reed. I think you know him. <laughs> and uh, then we might go down to another guy, Trader Joe's. Oh, all so, the buds live in this yeah, neighborhood. There you go. Do you smoke in a rental car? What? Do you smoke in a rental car? I do. Yeah, I yeah. love it. I used to smoke in my rental cars. Do, is there a... Is there a I smoke do. cigarettes, by the way. I don't know if that's... I smoke weed in my rental car. Really? Yeah, I don't smoke cigarettes anymore, so I just smoke weed in the rental car. Wow. But I, I think the weed smell goes away much faster than the oh, cigarette. Oh, for sure, yeah. What do you... Is there a thing you do, like osium or anything, before you return the car? I do that. Um, I also... Uh, I bring in like a um, uh, like an exorcism. I have a guy read the Bible in there. <laughs> you have an old uh, Roman Catholic. <laughs> yeah. You have an old Roman Catholic priest come in and bless the car. Yeah. I just like, can you get this evil out of the car? Have they ever said anything to you when you return the car? Well, I don't know if you're like setting me up for failure, but no, um, I'm just genuinely. To be asking. honest, I'm not the greatest driver, and now that I'm getting older, I have to wear special glasses to drive at night. Yeah, and uh, you know the guys that I tour with, who you know really well, Louis, Louis Katz, Katz. Yeah, his episode's comic, coming out in like two. You weeks. know, uh, Ian Fidan, like. All the different people I go, they don't like when I drive. So they will drive instead of me driving. Like yeah. it doesn't matter. They'd, they'd rather them drive six hours than me drive two hours. That's how bad a driver How I old am. were you when you got your license? I was driving before I had a license. Really? Like, because it was uh, Long Island. I worked for my dad. So we had to get back and forth. So it was like one of those, like, he's got a learner permit, but, yeah. you know, like we need him here at the store. So sure. let's just give him the car, you know, and I would just. So were you like 15? About 15, 16. We all yeah. like learned. We all like had to drive so we yeah. did drive and like you know we had like all these clunker cars so nobody really cared yeah if you banged up it they're like hey, we don't give a shit nobody it's, cared it's a, we have, it's a hunk and we also like um i was gonna say uh you know d driving back then you know on long island drinking and driving was like you know important like, yeah you know we all did it yeah so yeah. now you know like in a car like i'm so nervous especially in new york where sure. it's like there's so much stuff going on here. Like, I don't know how these kids get high or whatever and drive around here. I mean, it's, it's very, ridiculous. It's, it's, it racks you with anxiety. Mm -hmm. Like, w driving in New York City where everything's coming out of everywhere. Even oh, when you're, like, turning on right and you have the light, people could still be... Oh, for hours. Yeah, yeah. it sucks. It definitely sucks. But I always wanted to know if there was, like, a rental car place that you returned and they're like, did you smoke Oh, yeah, a yeah. No, I've been, I've been banged for it. One know? of my favorite stories that Big J told me yeah. was you got... It was right when they made smoking in all hotel rooms illegal yeah and jay told me a story that you guys were checking into a hotel he was opening for you yeah. and they're like it's a 250 dollars fee if you smoke and you were like i'll just pay the fee yeah i'll pay right now and they didn't understand they were like <laughs> they were like no 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 we can't mm -hmm. is that is that true that yeah yeah like, no because i thought it was like you know it's like a like a like fine yeah but then i could smoke the whole weekend but it, you get that a lot like um there's no hotels you can smoke anymore yeah. in fact i think even even the red roof inns have decided to say when did they the, get so they used uppity. to be like really like no rules but uh <laughs> red roof now, was like as long as there's a roof <laughs> anything it, under it goes it was like wrestling there you know yeah. anything <laughs> went but i was gonna say uh what was it in la where everybody is high everybody's sure. smoking pot all the time yeah, like, yeah it's just weird how they're like yeah no uh we'll fine you 500 dollars and this and that they get mad know? about cigarettes that's the one thing you know uh i quit drinking 11 years ago 
Congratulations. Not really, is it, though? Is it? Grab an orb. Thank you. <laughs> an orb of justice. These things even turn on anymore. Um, Here's your golden globe. <laughs> I, I want to smoke so much Weed? more than I want. No, cigarettes. Oh. More than I want to drink again. Wow. Like, I miss cigarettes, and they're kind of becoming popular again. Yeah, I heard that the kids, the scenesters, are, the, are yeah, smoking the coo- again. Cool you know? kids. It always the, starts with cool kids. It starts with the Azempic. Yeah. And now that they're all thin and... <laughs> slick they go we're hot let's smoke <laughs> we're all hot young and fuckable how yeah. old are you when you start smoking cigarettes i smoked like in my teen like a little bit but yeah. i always had like bronchitis and stuff like that but i really hit it hard in my 20s that's yeah. really when i started was but it because of comedy it was just easy i think it was it was also like you know other uh so much downtime yeah. and like you know like nothing's better than uh, booze and cigarettes together if you ask me there and is now, nothing. now it's just booze and coffee i'm sorry uh, coffee and cigarettes which so. is uh, the second best combo it's all right. I mean, I'm so old now. It really is, uh, you know, my sleep is terrible. Like uh, like for this one, I was like so excited because I didn't have to go to see my mom in the hospital or anything like that. I was like, oh, cool, man. I get to stay up late. You know, it's like not that I was going to go to sleep early, but it's like staying up to eight in the morning, just <gasps> drinking coffee. You know, there's something wrong with that. Yeah. Drink I'm not it. an air traffic controller. <laughs> why, why am I doing this? You, know? you don't give a shit. No one's yeah. life's in your hands. Yeah. I mean, that's like, I, it's just like bad habits, you know, and I think the road also does that because I've had weekends. I'm sure you've had it too, where like you land you unpack you do the show and then you don't sleep again until you actually get back to your own place yeah i don't think you sleep comfortably until you get home like i just did uh i just did two weekends and then my grandma died so i had to clean out her place oh wow so i had to go do that in between Uh and i wasn't sleeping at all i mean i would lay down and try to go to bed but it wasn't until i got home and went to sleep on monday right that i was like oh that was actual real sleep and here's the things in hotels now i'm I'm, I, i i saw it Right after the pandemic, when no one was in the hotels, and you, you ever go into the room and like you turn the shower and just like brown Dude, comes was, out, like it was crazy. no one had touched that shower for you two years. You had to let it run, yeah, for like uh, yeah, like a month basically. Yeah. It was that bad, and now I notice that like all the other stuff is falling apart. Like the uh, you know the TVs don't work, yeah, the air conditioning like it's just rattling. That's crazy. It's, terrible. it's like actually fire is coming out of the air conditioning it's like one of those and then you question them about it hey is there something going on here and they're like no 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 well, one's they, you know, the, the line you're is, the guy it's you not you know, us we'll send an engineer yes. which means if you have anything personal out you yeah. gotta hide it because there's gonna be a guy in your room mm-hmm. just going through your like looking at your stuff i hated that yeah i couldn't get hot water in cleveland i was at hilarities that sounds like a great title for something hot water like, in cleveland yeah <laughs> that's okay. a blues album that's uh so what did you do did you change but I rooms? called and i was like hey the hot water is not running and they're mm-hmm. like we'll send an engineer up and i was like i'll just take a shower in cold i would i would rather oh yeah yeah, shower. yeah. And by the way i let it run for like five minutes and then it came back on well that's the thing when you're like oh sorry it's my fault dude that's that happens all the time where i think something's broken in a hotel mm-hmm. and i'll call downstairs and they're like it's, it's probably not well, how about like when you have to move rooms and you've already unpacked everything is like the way you want it, and then it's like, okay, uh, I'll I'll move rooms, and now you're like walking through the hotel with like you got like your snacks, you <laughs> yeah. got your stuff on hangers. Yeah, it's you have two weird. shirts on at the yeah, same it's time. Weird. Um, Kate Middleton is she dead? What is Kate Middleton dead? <laughs> Where did that come from? I just want to know. Oh, you mean because of the AI? And so no, I like want to know about yeah, because it's it's a conspiracy that we're big into in this house. Wow, Be- because. They've already kind of, as, as Katie calls it, soft launched Prince William's mistress. They're Who already is like it? this woman. There's a woman um, that she's like, they have one of those British names, like the Sultanberry of Glastonbury. Oh, she's titled. It's like she's like a titled woman. Wow. But there's like rumors that she is the prince's mistress. Really? And they haven't seen Kate Middleton since Christmas. That's why they What that about AI, that picture with her in the paper? But right? that's why they had to pull it because it was AI. It was, uh, it was edited. Oh. And they caught the Photoshop mistake. God, I hope that's not true because I really like her. I thought that she really kind of energized that family there. Yeah. I was like, man, he met this woman. She's like, seems like pretty normal. You know, she's an attractive woman, you know, uh, accomplished. Well, she's that's dead. That's Wow. No, that's I don't know if she's tough. dead. And what about those kids? Are they doing okay? I don't know. I mean, that's got to be so, the worst family to have something go wrong in because they're like, we're not going to let anybody know the truth. Well, the king, of course, isn't feeling good either. No, they're all know. fucked up. Wow. That's why they do those adrenochrome parties where they suck the bait. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't getting, know that was the conspiracy of the house. Start getting you into QAnon. <laughs> I go, now, really, where does it follow? But I think it's funny that they put out a picture of her on British Mother's Day. Uh, yes. and then they were like oh no it's edited 
And then they made the the palace made a statement where she was like, "Yeah, I was just messing around with Photoshop." Like but, they're bad at covering it up. But they haven't seen her live. She had, she hasn't been public since Christmas. Wow. And in one picture, they're like, "Here she is driving in a car," but she's like turned mm-hmm. sideways. Yeah, I get it. Well, um, stay on top of that up for me. Okay, I will. I'm going to keep you up running a newsroom here. I'll keep yeah. you abreast, please. Next coming in. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> TikTok being banned. Go. Mm, interesting because um, <laughs> as a promoter of a special now, TikTok is important. Yeah. And like I've seen those clips on it, and I think the one thing TikTok does well is short. Yeah. You know, and so I'm like, I'm like, I'm. This is good for me because I got like short jokes. You sure. Know? That's why my special is short too. It's like 37 minutes. I'm like, no one has the attention span anymore for an hour. So we talked about this. I think one time at the cellar, like, yeah. You know who? You know, like who watches a whole hour anymore? People watch 50 minutes and they either say it was great or they turn it off. And like I'm like, 37 minutes seems right. And now I'm like, even that's too long. I think <laughs> I think like a good 15 minutes would yeah. be the way to go. We're gonna start doing two minute specials, something like that. Opens, I mean, closes, two jokes. I mean, I think all of our attention span is done like I'm, shot. I'm watching like all these tv shows like uh you know masters of air have you seen that one on no. apple it's about like the bomber guys yeah and it's, it. great. it's really really good but it's like you know you got to take a break got to yeah. look at other things well, then you, you look gotta, at your phone yeah well you know luckily you know i still have the flip i phone. love it I that's love... why i haven't heard much about this um kate thing you know i'm still, look at that look at that I'm i still, mean evidently the queen is very sick that's how slow <laughs> the wi is on your old phone yeah they're gonna call you just from the landline it's quite all right david <laughs> it's just how I, I'm fine. Yeah, so let I me think, ask you this. Okay, shoot. you're on the road, yeah. right? You and Louie were telling me you're doing the, you know, like you're out there doing the road. How much road are you doing? Like how much, how long are you out there? Two weeks a month. That's not bad. Two to three weeks a month. Yeah. I don't do the good. whole month. I'll take one weekend for the city. Yeah. And then usually like two to three on the road. I'm always like, you know, I'm out here, blah, blah, blah. You know, we add shows, you know, hopefully they sell out. But uh, And then I'm like, I got to get back to the city. And to be honest, I think I'm getting more accomplished on the road than I am in the city. I'm not really. You don't some like of these, city? Some of the shows lately, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's because it's more of a touristy crowd sure. or whatever it is. But my crowd gets it. And they don't mind when I'm like out there, you know, swinging, trying to come up with stuff. Yeah, trying but new stuff. like in the city here, it seems like there's a lot of. The moaning and groaning seems to be coming back. Have you noticed, when was the moaning and groaning the worst before? Like 90s? No, I would say that that was kind of the end of the good times. And then it became like, you know, just pretty much a lot of, of uh, filtering of comedy. You know really? What I'm and I, I'm like, you know, when I work with Jeff all the time, I'm always like, we can't do that. You know, I'm like, he's, he's got the balls sure. in that, in that um, situation. He's like, no, it's funny, do it. But I'm always like, no, no, I could see somebody getting upset. You know, or that's not right. That's but. crazy, because I would never think that you have that thought. Because, I mean, yeah, I love no, you. No, I mean, I'm always like, you know, you can always rewrite it better, you sure. know, that kind of thing. But, but still, like, your initial, like, thing that you come up with or especially on the fly is usually the one thing that'll uh you know you're like oh no you can't yeah. do that you know even though like everyone laughed yeah, yeah but i think you can i think we're at the page i think where we're turning it doesn't, now yeah it's like to where you can say whatever the fuck you want are you worried about ai at all when it comes to like there's rumors ai that, keeps coming up over and over well it's, it's everywhere people are now i'm hearing people are using it to write jokes well what is it that's the whole point it's like what is it is it is it a whatchamacallit is it an actual computer is there a robot somewhere that's doing that. like what is it so i think it's a program that they teach to like take chat bot is that yeah, what you're talking about that's exactly what okay. it is yeah like chat bot where they take things everything that's ever made and then they like produce a new sure well this is what i've said before on, on multiple uh, podcasts is yeah. that hey there might be a computer program that can write poetry and music but can it work at a coffee shop no until it makes it no. i don't think so <laughs> that would can be it great. live off a girlfriend in brooklyn <laughs> till it makes it no that, that would be awesome if ai had to have a day job before it could yeah. do comedy you're like you no, can't the frustrated yeah it's got to wait tables at a cafe and then it might be able to write jokes but you know ai should also have that defensive mechanism where like people call it out on the playroom it's like no, no no i never read that it's nothing like that hey well, you're only saying that because i'm a this yeah. one zero one yeah. zero zero no, zero one this is bullshit and then it like walks out of the room and makes the noise yeah it goes fuck this you don't then if you don't appreciate me i'm fucking gone yeah so you know yeah because i don't think i mean like writes jokes it does all those different things i mean like look at the crowds do they really you know like some crowds my crowd loves a joke you know i was talking to norman and sam those guys joke yeah. you know like louis cat they're all joke guys yeah and like to me it's like 
you know, if it writes better the jokes than us, then, you know, maybe that's something we have to step our game up. But, you know, it's not like we're going to be able to, like, go head-to-head -to -head against AI like in a, a game of Go or anything, yeah, you know? that I would mean, be funny if five years from now it's, like, me, you, Sam, and Mark versus four robots. Well, what it is doing, is it's definitely killing jobs. That's yeah. for sure. It's killing a lot of jobs. They said it's going to eliminate... <clears throat> I, one guy said it. he thinks in the next five years AI will eliminate 70% of animation jobs. Really? So people that are working on animated movies shows small stuff even commercials yeah they're going to be gone because they're going to be able to do it so fast with ai well what about the um cooking is not my strong suit okay i'm not good at cooking i'm too dumb for it but i need to eat just like you need to eat so why don't you get some factor ready to eat meals they come prepared and they're prepared they're pre-made but they're ready to make dude myrtle's freaking out she knows dan's leaving she's like not my friend but eating is better with easy factors, delicious, ready to eat meals. Fresh, never frozen meals are chef crafted, dietitian approved, and ready to go in just two minutes. 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there's over 60 add ons to help you stay fueled and get you good all day long. So go check out Factors Ready to Eat Meals. I keep like slowing down because. You want to be like, are they ready to eat? And then they are. And you're like, oh, shit, this is awesome. This is the kind of stuff I need. Two-minute meals, fuel up fast with factors, restaurant-quality meals that are ready to heat and eat wherever you are. Pancakes, smoothies, and more. Discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day, like breakfast, midday bites, and more. There's no prep, no mess. Flexible to your schedule, and that's what you want. You want stuff that's going to help out your schedule. So get as much as you like or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. It's the perfect solution for looking for fast, premium options with no cooking required. Sign up and save. We've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Head to factormeals.com slash soder50 and use code soder50, that's soder50, to get 50% off. That's code soder 50 S O D E R five zero at factormeals.com slash soder fifty to get fifty percent off. That's a hell of a deal. I'm on the road. I'm leaving this little fatso back here in New York. -hee -hee. End of the month, I will be at Zany's in Nashville, Thursday through Saturday, one of my favorite clubs, March 28th through the 30th. Then next month, I'll be headed to old Omaha, Nebraska. Listen, I know we have beef from the Colorado, Nebraska days. I didn't even go to see you. I just grew up re rooting for him. But I do, I am excited to come back to the Omaha Funny Bone April 11th through the 13th. And then I'll be at the DC Improv April 19th through the 21st. Go to dansoder.com for those tickets and go to youtube.com and watch On the Road, my special. It keeps her fed. Isn't that right? Yeah. Fuck, this dog rules. Uh, what were they saying? Like, uh, that now is a great time to have tech skills, like in terms of like, you're able to do stuff with your hands, like you're a yeah. carpenter. It's like all those old, you know, like blacksmithing, all those kind of skills yeah, are going to be- Yeah, trade school. Yeah, because it doesn't have hands yet, yeah. you know? So. <laughs> well, I don't know. Have you seen those Boston Dynamic robots? Oh, I love that. They yeah. showed it once and it was just like walking around and you're like, oh, that's cool. And now it like sits down, shoots a basketball, right? Crazy. It's scary. Well, I hate to- uh, you know brag but when i was with uh ian Van Ant in yeah. uh, vegas we were playing wise guys great club by love the way. wise guys so we went to the uh, battle bot arena oh yeah they which got is battle that, bots in that's vegas? where that's where that show finally landed in vegas within within walking distance of the sphere so it's kind <laughs> yeah. of like a futuristic world over <laughs> yeah. there and they have the arena there and like <laughs> Ian, of course, who uh, is over the top, yeah. you know, he uh, said, we're going in as VIPs. So we had like a, like a special little area and they asked us for one drink. Were the robot, were there like robot waiters? Were there well, like I think you get a backstage tour, but I go, please, come on, let's get out of here. <laughs> so, but uh, it was just funny to see the robots going at each yeah. other. And I'm like, where's the trash talk with all this AI and stuff like that? Why don't they like, yeah, you put know, a jack you're nothing but like a rumbo <laughs> with a blah, blah. And Your you, mother was a yeah. dust buster. Yeah, and that kind of where's Whoa. all that fun i wonder if when the robots eventually take over the humans that are left are like you used to cockfight us and battle bots will be there like sure. 
you know, they're cockfighting. Well, it's funny how the BattleBot, um, uh, you know, like you can get the bo- best of both worlds. You can go see BattleBots with a stripper. <laughs> you can go see, you can buy fentanyl and go see a BattleBot. Yeah, and you know? Bono might be there doing wall <laughs> yeah. music. Yeah. I love it. I love that. Is you, that what you call the sphere wall music? Now? <laughs> yeah, that's what I, it's wallpaper music. Oh, okay. They just change the wallpaper. Because Bono's always, Bono's one of those guys that, does so many nice things but also doesn't seem nice he's just aloof yeah he's like god himself he's just a little you know he's not emotionally attached bono you're like i understand you're doing good things but you're also kind of coming off like a dick well like when they put the album on our phones oh right right oh that was years ago right yeah but that's that's like kind of the moves that you two do Mm, i remember listening to that with the real kate middleton so i'm trying to bring it circle around i love it for editing i I hope yeah editing for like i really hope the 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 royal crown reaches out to you and they're Mm. like do you know anything do you watch that show the crown no that's way too boring that's like uh downton abbey you, well, I like a, a nice uh, period. I'm watching Shogun. Have you seen this? I watched the first episode. It's great. great, dude. It's yeah. great. And I didn't know it was a remake. Yeah, no, the original one in the uh, when I was a kid, I was like, man, this is so cool. Yeah. It, and that was like at the height of Benny Hanna's, too. So like, you could be like, <laughs> let's go down there and sword fight. Oh, no, fuck, it's not man. happening. Yeah, it, it was like uh, Ninja Fever. Yeah. Everybody's like, I got to learn more about Japan. You got to give it up for them in that haircut. I yeah. Mean, honestly, that, like, <laughs> yeah. How, big the was, how big was karate in the, like, when you well, were Well, I'm little, from Long Island. That was yeah, like, I mean, uh, you know, everybody at least tried karate. I you love know? it. But now that I think about it, like this, you know, MMA. So you well, MMA is 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 massive, but I think karate, the karate boom of the eighties, yeah. was more specifically like white dudes kicking and chopping, yes. not guys in bedazzled shirts choking you at a at a Hooters. Right. Well, it was also like a lot of people wearing geese that didn't fit like a lot of like how do i it was very stiff you know like oh how do you fight in this kind of thing yeah but i at my gym when i see the guys do the mma roll around you know yeah. they're like rolling around with each other the i'm like play? When, how we got so comfortable watching that like yeah. it's just like n- nobody gives it any mind but just like imagine walking into a place like you just want to skip some rope yeah. and it's like two guys in a death crawl <laughs> on top of each other and i got that <laughs> and you know like didn't anybody who didn't know that go like that guy needs help i just want to do a set of th- three sets of 10 on an incline <laughs> and there's another guy like watching it yeah. like what is this you the know? funniest thing i ever saw in a gym was in my high school weight room we were like going to work out for football and this guy mm-hmm. that no one had ever seen was in like black sweatpants and a black tank top and he put out a mat and started doing the break dancing thing oh really but then he never break danced wow so he was just like he would just like start it and all of us were watching him like all right go but he gonna, didn't know we were watching him oh and he would do the thing like no but it was in the no. in the locker room it was in our high school uh gym wow. like in the weight room wow and we were like what the fuck is this guy doing because break dancing that was also another craze yeah but i was already kind of old for that you were like, older for that I think, I think it's it's by the time i got out to long island it was definitely like two years dead i always would love to find out if you had like a break dancing or karate phase in the 80s like no, a, no a young frisbee Dave pot you know taco bell was big you know like that kind of <laughs> just, like, just naming stuff just like normal do. just normal loser you know yeah. kind of stuff but i i would say where i come from it was a, more importantly about like jobs like what kind of job do you got yeah. like you know that guy he works for the you know city and this guy does this he's a this guy's a stock bro this guy over here is a plumber you know yeah. so everybody was their job and it was like really important to have a job so yeah. i'm kind of glad that like i grew up in that world but it, it to this day it's like you know well what's wrong with them get them a job you know like that's <laughs> kind of thing jobs all the time you know what's funny is when they said today that the uh, house of representatives voted to ban tiktok yeah the the thing on twitter that everyone was saying was like now they got to get a job they're doing that they go yeah. now they got to get a job right go get a job mm-hmm. get them down to the border yeah that's always connecting issues stop the border get a job well but- let me ask you this as a guy on the road yeah okay so you know like taylor i think rules like you know like they're probably going to study her career and her oh moves God. and like she doesn't seem to make a wrong move yeah. you know and like the whole thing Nothing with, but green lights with re-energizing football like which is what she did basically yeah. you know um the ratings on the on the on the game like went up and all that kind of stuff but i did like love like when they were like one, wondering if she was going to make the super bowl yeah to see her boyfriend and like um we kept making fun of it like where like her songs are all about like loss and regret yeah. that like she's in tokyo doing you know to a sold out you know whatever it is mega Egg dome whatever it 
it is. Yeah, Tokyo Dome. Like, and whatever he left me. Okay, good night, everybody. I have to get on a private jet and go see my boyfriend at the Super Bowl. Yeah. I'm not really a loser. Yeah, I just <laughs> sing about yeah, it. Yeah, I just you, make a lot of money di- talking yeah, about it. You <laughs> stupid bitches are going to sleep alone, but <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I Well, there was a thing, you know. If you guys ate ice cream, you'd be eating it right now. Taylor Swift <laughs> catches a lot of shit. <laughs> Taylor Swift catches a lot I of shit. I think she's for, awesome. She's a year from being old enough to be president. She's 34? Yeah, she's a year away from, like, she can run for president. And And she probably would win, honestly. She she probably would. She probably could. Yep. Uh, We might get there. We might get to the point where people, like... If they ever let people under 75 years old be a president, (laughs) then, (laughs) yeah, maybe she has a chance. We say it's 35, but really it's 75. It it is now. They should raise it so it wouldn't look so odd. Well, they (laughs) they said um, that on her South American tour, because she catches shit for how much she flies private, well, she has to, though. Yeah. She can't fly on how Delta. Is that, how is that? She's going to get on a regular airplane? How the people would scream. I mean, that would be terrible. She'd have to wear, like... A, she can't even probably go to a real airport. There has to be, like, some Area 51 she has to go to. <laughs> like, <laughs> Just 16 floors below. She has below a transporter the, or yeah. something. Yeah. I bet, she, I bet she gets beamed places. Yeah, probably. They already have that technology. <laughs> because if she went into a regular airport, she would cause chaos. It would, it would shut the place down. Yeah, anywhere she goes yeah. in public. It would cause, but they were giving her shit because she flew home every night of her South American tour. That's what one article said, that really? every night she would perform in South America, fly back to New York, sleep, and then go back to South America. Oh, that's America. weird. I that wouldn't is, do that. That is weird. <laughs> Well, maybe that had something to do with just like... Uh, Which is what we were talking about. You don't sleep until you get home. Yeah, I guess so. maybe so. she's like, listen, I'm doing I'm doing arenas. I'm doing uh, football stadiums. But like when you're saying sleep, she probably went to LA. Like she didn't come all the way to New York, did she? I don't know. The article was saying that she flew back to New York. <laughs> I think she's also the canary in the coal mine for this city. The minute she moves out of here... Good luck. It is going to be barter town. Do you think we fucking leave? I think she is actually powering this whole city right now with her taxes. Her economy is... Uh, I mean, come on. Yeah. You know? That is so funny. The second she moves, I'm like, guys... Get going. Yeah. Pack up, see, pack up, pack up. Just you're going to see people breaking off just like things that just start, you know, like not that it's not happening now. But. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, well, I think New York was, it's funny because, um, you know, after COVID, I'm from Colorado. So a lot of my friends would be like, how's New York? Is it really scary? And you're like, it's a little bit sketchier, but it's still New York. Yeah. It's not like horrible. I think it sucks. But, you think um, it sucks? As an old man now looking at it, but, you know, that's always looking at things through old eyes. I mean, uh, you can see it a lot, especially, like, down on in the village, like, yeah. on the weekend, where it's, like, the 20-somethings of our time now are out. They're all dressed up. They're ready to party. You know, I know uh, I know they're smiling and laughing on the asshole, but inside it's their student loan debt that really holds them back. <laughs> it doesn't look like any of that, by the way. <laughs> the yeah. bottle service, all that kind of stuff. But they're out. It's like, this is their New York now. So, for them, there's... Uh, uh, this is what's going to be normal that when they look back on it years from now you know when they're um eating cat food in a place they can't afford they'll be like <laughs> hey you know what i remember when like you know cigarettes were only 20 bucks a pack yeah. you know oh that kind of God. thing so when i quit 11 when i quit smoking 11 years ago it was 12.65 a pack oh my god that's, what is it now you'd have to go to like probably oklahoma to get that kind of a smoke really now. that yeah. bad like there's so many like uh places where smokes are like still cheap but are they up to 20 bucks yeah, it's nineteen something a, a, a pack for these. It's nineteen for bucks the for American, American spirits. spirits. Yeah, nineteen flat or like nineteen sixty five. Like you give them a twenty. I don't bucks. know on the spectrum. It's in the nineteen to twenty dollars. I need thing to know. <laughs> We're all freak out, Dave. Well, how about the price of weed now that they semi legalize whatever? The, talk about a horrible rollout. Yeah, I mean it's horrible. By the way, a lot of those dispensaries you see walking around here aren't even real. Yeah, they're illegal. They're illegal dispensaries. They sure are. Yeah, they don't even sell real weed. They didn't think about that. No, that's what. The beauty of this town is you have to it's look a town up. powered by business by people who've never actually been in a business. <laughs> but why can't people just be honest? I don't get it. <laughs> the corruption in this city is so crazy that when they legalize weed, you're like, it'll take five more years. To get oh it. here yeah like colorado is already what drug are you guys up to now mushrooms like, mushrooms so there you go i think they probably are moving on to acid at this point i bet you i you know what that might be funny but i bet you they will have like lsd like a place where like you know like a, in vegas you can throw axes and smash yeah, yeah, it yeah. i mean you like can do that. Probably a place like the lsd room yeah you know? a trip a trip tank 
A <laughs> trip tech. Here you, go, here you go. We're just going to put you in this room. You can trip your dick off. That would be great. And you're like wearing a special suit so you can't hurt anything. Yeah, you can't even go. And then, you, you know, when your acid wears off, they let you out. Oh, that would be really cool. Yeah. Uh, they'll probably dumb down the acid where it's just like, you know, take all the bad trips out of it. You know, yeah, well, re, re, what, uh, re-engineer it. What they're doing now, because I brought a bunch of weed with me back from California, is, is it's so powerful. Is that it? You're, yeah, that you're like you smoke some weed and you're like i think i'm genuinely losing my mind wow like it's crazy because i grew up i've been i've been smoking weed since i was 15 and it's just progressively got more and more powerful wow to where you're kind of like yeah, i can only have a little bit what now. about those gummies i hear about those yeah. all the time are gummies those are, more stronger yeah they're like up to like two thousand milligrams or whatever and then Man. you eat it and you go you almost go mentally insane does your do you smoke weed you don't look like a weed guy you seem like an oh he's ale. a weed guy seems like an ale man to me yeah you know? just drink it old ale on the <laughs> yeah. beard it's yeah a, he has to be- wipe it like this like an old dog comes in and licks it off <laughs> yeah he's actually a mead guy a mead man yeah, he likes mm. mead he I likes like that too honey mm. that is warm yeah yeah alcohol. what is that again it's like just terrible it's fermented honey yes yeah mm. <laughs> well i'm glad that the weed is better you know i i think it's hard on these kids now they have to test all the drugs right they yeah sure well they have to worry about fentanyl yes which is nothing back in your fun days you know i have worry. no idea what it, i mean i play all the fentanyl towns i was in san diego portland i mean yeah. i play all of these towns where it's like fentanyl you can smell it it's in the air <laughs> you know? oh that fentanyl breeze yeah it's coming in off the water when i, mm-hmm. when I was uh when i was in san diego doing american comedy company one time that's a great club I love way. that club great club after the shows they used to do these like really organized meet and greets mm-hmm. and this guy handed me a joint just out of it or whatever and this was like six years ago he just put it in my hand and he goes don't worry there's no fentanyl in that one and i was like i just started hearing about fentanyl yeah i was like well i'm throwing this away exactly. why would you say it's not in here but that part of town where the american comedy club that Gas is like this the partiest partying is party a part of town you go outside and it's insane it's it's really like you know to be honest uh, you know, I walk around a lot during the day, so um, you know it's uh, that town is built for guys like me. Oh, yeah. who, who like is is like a lot of unhoused, a lot of uh, <laughs> bad choices, that kind of stuff. So I blend right in with them. Do people start following you around like the Pied Piper when you go there? <laughs> no, it's really funny. They go, our leader is back. I well, I haven't done this on stage in a while, but I was like telling everybody, like you know, my crowd, you know, deserves more than what just jokes. So here it is, and I would give the code to the bathroom at Panera Bread. <laughs> <laughs> I go, believe me, I've been there. It's a good bathroom. <laughs> so that's like one of my jokes that yeah. I do now. But I was just like, you know, it's. It's a town of winners, yeah. and then it has this this sadness to it with that ever. But that one area, that party kind of spring break area, it's like always spring break there. Yeah. Like like in Disney World, it's always like Christmas, you yeah. know? So it's like always, and they're like fighting on the streets, and it's the cops nuts. just whipping around and all that kind of stuff. And I was just like, you know, I didn't grow up in that kind of world. Like we, like we had a later last call. Sure. I think a lot of it has to do with this 1.30 well, last the, call. Yeah, it's the 2 a.m., 1.30 that really, because... You're right. New York's 4 a.m. Yeah. So people are people don't care. They're and just I'm, like going to drink. And then if they're up till four, well, then they're up till four. Yeah. The two o'clock feels like we're running out of time. People. Yeah. They power. They, yeah. And they then power. they get too drunk. What's, what's it in Denver again? Uh, 2 a.m. OK. It's 2 I think it's 2 a.m. Most places. I think 4 a.m. in New York is pretty rare. I forgot how like how spread out Denver is. I was at yeah. the uh, at the comedy works and I was just like, you know, I want to do this. And it's like, oh, man, that's like 10 blocks away. Yeah. And they're like real blocks. You know, yeah, like, you got to like drive everywhere. Denver's, yeah. Denver, you know, it was a cow town until the drive 70s. or um, one wheel board. Oh, yeah, you can, you can do the one wheel board. <laughs> that's another town. I think that was the first place I saw like one of those one wheel. Oh, today, I'll tell you right now, man, growing up in Colorado, alternate forms of transportation oh, for sure. are always big. Mm. Fleece vests and anywhere that isn't just regular old car or walking or how about just a woman nursing yeah something <laughs> yeah. it really is nursing funny. a something as she's on a boogie Be- board because oh. you don't it, there is like a hippie element to yeah. denver but then there's also like the conservative outdoorsy type which no one ever talks about where they're like or there's people there that don't like the outdoors too and i'm like so me. why are you living here that was me if you don't ski like but i think you had there. to ski to live here i think that was like part of your like dna to your skiers and then there's people like no i just love the um other thing you do there there's like, a the popular omelet. the weed yeah omelets <laughs> the omelets the, the green chili yeah and the legal weed there is a 
fraction of the population in denver that resents skiing really but won't ever be vocal about it will they vote for nikki haley will yeah. they will nikki haley win colorado i don't pre- appreciate skiing. Either. back to kate middleton where is she is she eating enough is she sleeping yet but i always loved your stories of growing up in denver because i like that's another town that you romanticize like how different it, it really is oh yeah know? but it you realize that it just doesn't have stuff yeah, like you moved. I moved to New York, and I'm like, oh, they every they have everything here. Mm-hmm. That's why I could never live in another city. That's why people when they leave New York, they're like, now I'm into it. I want to go to a musical. It's yeah. too late. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I really yeah. could use an art gallery. Yeah. Well, you had that. You oh, didn't want it. I want a <laughs> bodega that's the size of a closet that yeah. only sells Kit Kats Can't and do diet it. sodas. <laughs> yeah, that was the thing where when I living here whenever i go somewhere else i just go like oh they don't have everything they yeah. don't have like it's hard to get food you know that on the road oh i because you eat late louis told me you usually eat after shows yeah we go out like that's like the hunt it's like the hunt for late night food and you know they're like googling stuff and we're asking like you know the the we usually go to the biggest person at the club meaning weight wise <laughs> hey you kind of would know this is there like a late night no yeah. i don't know anything about that i cook at home yeah you know, you, that kind of weird thing people so. don't realize being fat is actually a skill well in philly we which is a great food town we were with a guy who was uh, you know like a big guy and like we were using him almost as like a bloodhound like (laughs) he'll smell it he's got to find it he must feel it yeah you gotta be something open every time you go to a city you gotta find a taste oracle (laughs) yeah find me find me tasty things just listen to your gut where is it two blocks up oh oh, oh. you hear grumbling you go oh which way is his nose facing and the worst part of no late night food is the one place like a wawa yeah becomes like a scene like a circus you know it is there was a wawa on market street when you do fill it when you do helium when they were over by the hotel Mm -hmm. there was it's shut down now because so many people were oh, for destroying sure. it yeah no they, they were, were like, like the teens were going the in. the teens yeah. they wilding was. in there but they were they were wilding yeah, they were. out they were like breaking shit and you're like i just want a sandwich i went there one time at like one in the morning after friday night shows and all i wanted was a sandwich and i felt like hours i right. don't know if this is worth it this is yeah this is a risk you know, it's like one of those where you're like, um, I'm not pulling my credit card out because I think that's a tell in this <laughs> situation. I'll, I'll just pay cash. Yeah, you're just you're just doing you just a bag of change so no one fucks with you. But I think uh, you know Louis, who is a Louis Cast, a very funny comic. You should check out his special. Yeah, his special's great on YouTube. But he's like a foodie, like he loves different well, types of he food. He eats a lot. He eats a lot too, which, which is, is weird. And and since we both go on the road with Louis, you know, there's eat. moments where he'll be like, "I need to eat." And me and you, I eat just like you because of his eat high once in the intensity morning. act. <laughs> the, the way he eats is like, so what are you going to do up there? Zip line or something? It's like, no, I'm well, going to talk to a microphone. He's mm. flexing his core the entire time. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> he's just sitting there like, ah, ah. but he told me one time before a show. I think we were in Sacramento. He's like. I've got to eat something or else I'm going to get very grumpy. Like, like he's what? Like he's the incredible. <laughs> What's Hulk. the difference? Yeah. Where I was like, all right, well, I don't, cause I'm very casual about it. I'm like, yeah. ah, we'll eat after the show. We'll find something. Mm-hmm. But Louie was like, I have to eat now and then I'll eat after the show. And I, I can't eat before I go on. Cause I already feel like kind yeah. of like low and like, uh, I like the, 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 um, the pop you get from like uh, hunger, yeah. you know, like to bring up, I absolutely get angry and it gets me ready to go. Yeah. I like the, the angry part, but I will, I don't like eating because I do feel lethargic and sleepy Yeah, and I don't want to like, Plus it's hard I, to perform. I might have to do a backflip up there. Yeah. You know? Everyone knows you do a high <laughs> acrobatic act. If things aren't going well, then I'll backflip <laughs> off the stage. <laughs> yeah. Dude, how else are you going to play that recorder? You exactly. need the fuel. I mean, I have a lot of tricks, you know, Has my TSA thing. ever fucked with your recorder. No, but it's funny because when you take it apart, it looks like a lot of other things. It, does it, look- it comes apart three. There's three things to it, like an AR-15. Really? So it's like, do, do you, do, do you I'm like blindfolded a, doing it. <laughs> do, you it. Have a, do you have like a little case? No, where, no, where I got rid of that. you put together in the green room, like a sniper rifle? You know, it's really, uh, uh, you know, I was like, you know, the recorder, blah, blah, blah. I started before the pandemic and like I yeah. knew some tunes, but I can't remember them because of I'm old now, but it really is good for two things. They say dementia, like uh, learning an instrument sure. is the way to go. And then also uh, for COPD, you know, yeah. it's just yeah, like, getting it's, really, your breath out. it's a win-win, you know? Yeah. And I can tell when I don't play for a couple of days, like, it's like, I can feel like, <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, that's it for tonight. Sorry, guys, I'm doing warm-ups. Come see me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, you know what's fun? It was during the pandemic, a lot of the shows here were outside and, and we were both people that were doing a lot of spots outside. Yes. And so what would be fun is you wouldn't really know because they couldn't announce it because comedy was illegal. True. De Blasio made it illegal. 
Um, I can't wait for the movie about the pandemic oh, comedy. You can't go I mean, outside. We'll be, we'll, be, we'll be replaced by marginalized groups, I hope. Yeah. You know. I can't wait to be played by a lesbian Asian. So, uh, but the point of it was like, we were like unsung heroes, like the Newsies. Remember that musical? Yeah, like, they're yeah. news kids, but they're fighting the Nazis. Well, the funniest part was I've never bombed in front of so many heroin addicts <laughs> than just being outside during the pandemic and watching them be like, this sucks. I'm going to go do heroin in the park. Well, how about the uh, just... The sounds of, 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 first of all, ambulances whipping around all the with time. people who were who dying. dying. And then helicopters, like all the time. It was just yeah. like, you know, um, I always bring up Red, uh, you know, Red Dawn. Yeah, that yeah. Movie, and I was like, so here we are in the re-education <laughs> camp. And I'm going to give you a little speech. That <laughs> was like when we did the car shows. It was like yeah. another like nightmarish. We did it was one with Jay. We drove all the way down to like right outside D.C. Yeah. And like we're so excited. Like we're going to get paid. We're going to do show. And when we were there, it was just like one of those like, whole, you know, like, yeah. like it was like midnight express like just terror i did a show down on the lower east side and the guy was he was in the middle of the summer like right during black lives matter and then we were doing a show and yeah. comedy was illegal and he goes all right if the cops go up if the cops show up when you're on stage and you have the mic just start protesting <laughs> oh, that's yeah, I was like, about what he goes i don't know make something up and he goes just start protesting and wow. I was like, that's such a funny way out of it if, there, if i heard a cop car like whoop whoop and i'm like hey, that's why the man can't be taking me down but my favorite part about the pandemic shows were because you didn't know who was on the lineup i would turn a corner and hear oh you knew you and i was hear. like oh it tells on the show awesome <laughs> and i was almost mad that i missed your set because i was like because you just be outside and you just hear it like down the street it, the but, recorder's coming off the building but i remember like the stand was i i would say that's yeah that was our madison square garden <laughs> was, for outdoor that's where shows I bombed so many times <laughs> but the but across is some kind of city agency that's what it and is and the guy would always stand out there this guy like with yeah. um, a million keys and he would just look at us like man yeah. that's just stupid and then they started doing some sort of funding for underprivileged people so there was all these people really going through it yeah and then they were watching us go through it because no one was laughing so uh, they, just outside they, bombing people love like a failure like that and then uh what was the other place at the cellar when they put up the plexiglass yeah. that to me was like you know a humbling experience yeah, for all of us because i've been to uh <laughs> you know rub out booths yeah. but i never saw the other side of the plexiglass yeah. oh, so this now is what i did it feels like. so now i yeah much respect to the Jay, people in that trade big j compared it to the tubes where you pick up dollars the blizzard bucks <laughs> he goes what are we getting the blizzard bucks here but it really felt like you were in line like you were a serial killer standing trial in the future and how about this like logan's run style there is a place. It's called Soul Jewels. <laughs> if you can get there, it's an outdoor but honestly, venue, and they're gonna pay you. But honestly, <laughs> and here's the here's the honest God truth: when you did Soul Jewels, you yeah. were like, "Oh, this is this is great. This, this is, is feels like if this is the future of comedy, I'm in." It felt like you, <laughs> you were like, "That's real water." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's we real made water it. coming out of here. <laughs> Everyone was. I mean, because then, dude, when people found out Soul Jewels was good, it got booked. Like, oh, for you sure. would reach out, and you'd be like, two months from now, maybe he is the Oscar it. Schindler. He saved yeah. a lot of lives. That I guy." gotten four more shows <laughs> four more shows but i love that guy because he really like you know he, he's like a forward thinker like he has that new venue it's like a, he's got an outdoor dome he now owns his country club yeah i mean it's probably like they train spies there or something like <laughs> yeah, underneath it out. is something else you go you know that it was actually an al-qaeda cell yeah, in the united there's states something underneath that like there's guys you know and like ninja us, stars there's just us going like it's good shows yeah, with a write-off yeah. so but i was like man this guy look at this guy like i'm like how are you able to do this and so quickly isn't there like ordinances and stuff like he's like no they don't care as long as you know this and that and that and i'm like wow dude yeah. I, you're going to jail yeah. i'm like that's crazy <laughs> well he built the giant dome the thunder yes. dome yeah and then it just became like a real comedy club yeah the, I, I did one without the dome and it was great and i immediately got off stage i was like can i come back and do that again and he's yeah. like yeah we're gonna put like a almost like um like a hanger it was mm -hmm. like an airport airplane hanger yeah but it worked fucking phenomenal and people knew to byob bring your own chairs all that stuff yeah it was him and then Chappelle was doing his shows yeah. you know which was like the cool the way he he kind of did that with the yeah but you had to be you had to be a hall of fame white 
to get the invite. <laughs> Chappelle wasn't letting no run of the mill whites. He was okay, only doing all it on, save for the election. <laughs> but it was cool. Don't worry, November, November will hear me. And I remember <laughs> people on the road would tell me, like, I'm driving down to spring, I'm going yeah. to that show, I'm so excited, and you have to test and all that kind of stuff. So there were a couple of hot spots. I and I know in LA, from what I heard, of course, they take it to the next level. It was yeah. like one of those where, like, a parking lot with a circle, and like you yeah. could buy the circle, and they would have like some wine there for you, some veg, like some, some fruit. <laughs> A crude out there. Like, you know, like it's like a VIP yeah. only gift bag for coming to see a parking lot show. Well, Michelle Wolf was living uh like on Chappelle's property. Right. So she was doing all those shows. Yeah. And at first I was like, that's so awesome. This is so cool. And then I slowly started getting jealous because we were doing rooftop shows and all these yeah. shows that kind of sucked. And then she started posting the pictures of who was there. And I was like starting to get jealous because it was like Louis C.K., right, all John, exact. John Stewart, mm -hmm. like all these guys or whatever. And I woke up one morning and I was just like, all right, I'm jealous. I'm just very jealous. Really? I got like actually mad where I was like, what's the next picture, Michelle? You with my dead dad? What are you, uh, you just bragging about all these people that you got to do comedy with? Because it was when, when that happened, it was like you were desperate to get stage time. But you know she's super cool and she's a great. She's one like, of my best friends. But how many other? How I many other? It. How many other people were locked in with a guest? Oh. You know, it's like they just came over like that day. Like, hey, I I want to see that new couch you bought. And then <laughs> pandemic. Now they're trapped in this house with now, two people. Now we're roommates. Yeah, uh, uh, I guess we could put them up in the attic or something. I can't really complain because I mean I got lucky as far as Katie and I had been dating for about six months. Nice, and it worked out. But I knew a lot of couples that were like at that same stage. What about the solo people? I know. Well, we you. Were came on the bonfire mm -hmm. and i love that because you just moved into your new place yeah or at the time it was your new place right and i love that you're like i'm not smoking in here i'm not smoking in yeah, here. yeah i didn't last and long. then by the th mm -hmm. second or third time you're on the bonfire you're just smoking and we're like dave you smoking you're like i'm smoking in here now yeah well but you i know, get it i will say one thing that um you know as that as we move further away from those times yeah. you know um uh, uh i was gonna say like um you know I personally think that the crowds pop so hard after that. They were so excited yeah, they to be are. back out. And then, like, that kind of powered this comedy boom. But, yeah. you know, I'm always waiting. Every day I wake up and it's like, you know, comedy over, juggling in. You know, I'm waiting for that news, <laughs> that news story, you know. <laughs> were you in comedy the first time the bubble collapsed? Yeah, I was there. Yeah. And mm -hmm. was it, was it like, gradual or was it sudden? It was so, it's like I passed a catch rising star and then the roof fell on me. No, wow, that was, that that's so like, funny. the actual club falls on you. <laughs> it no, it, it was a gradual sl like. Slot. But did you start seeing it because you were like out? Doing I was working the door at the comedy at the uh, Improv in New York, and I could see it. And it's like you know, from that Boston, that Boston thing, which I never was good enough to do that. Yeah. When it was booming, so I was there on the on the. We're already done with comedy. Yeah. Sw uh, cupcake, yeah, sweetheart, yeah, yeah. whatever they call you. You get so in late. They were done. Like yeah. it was the people coming out to see it. Now were like the people who didn't get the memo that comedy wasn't cool anymore <laughs> so they were the worst of the worst yeah they're like i don't even know what this is and but you're like then it slowly started building again but i would say that it took to the mid 90s if not longer comedy central had a big part in the re redo of comedy but it also there was too much comedy and then there wasn't enough comedy then there was a lot of generic comedy so yeah. you know like I don't know how people do it. Like, how many hours a day can you devote to comedy? You yeah. know, like, you listen to a podcast, that's that's an hour, hour plus, and then you go see a show, that's a lot. You know, yeah. I feel like you're you're good, you yeah. know? Well, but then Vecchio, some people, then it's the TikTok loop, then it's the something else. Vecchione you know? told me that he, you know, he's opening for Nate on the road doing Two these, great comics yeah. right there. Two, uh, two comics. phenomenal comedians. Yeah. And day, uh, he's on the road with Nate doing these arenas, and he said he was in Kansas City Super Bowl weekend, he just told me this and he opened for Nate. Nate was like, come by and do a guest set because he's doing a 3 p.m. show at the arena. And Vecchione at the end of his set was like, hey, I'm at Kansas. I'm at the Comedy Club of Kansas City. And people came to his shows that night. So they went from a show to another show. Wow. Which Amazing. is crazy. Well, that's Skankfest for you. Yeah. I mean, those people get online in the heat. Go see a show, get yeah. out of the show, really nice, super fans, get back online, go see another show. Yeah, so that's and it's pretty like amazing. hot in some of those rooms, and you're like, I can't believe you guys are doing this all I day. mean, it really is like, uh, you know, I, I, I give Christine and Lewis a, a lot of credit for like, you know, it's sad with the loss of Jeff's for laughs. You know? Sure. Or is that AI? Is it still going on, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> or is that is is JFL our Kate Middleton? Uh, what What's is going on up there? Has anyone is, been up there? Is JFL dead? <laughs> is it alive? Speak, Did a, mimes. <laughs>
<laughs> the mimes aren't talking. All the French people are going like, <laughs> how am I going to go dress like a duck? It is, it is. Um, that yeah. was the funny thing about Just for Last, where it was like, you know, I was there in the beginning when like people were like getting these huge deals. Yeah. And then it became like, you know, there's a lot of bookers. Yeah. And then it became like, could you fly yourself up and put yourself <laughs> up and then kind of uh, Jason Bourne your way out of this town, fight through the French biker gangs? Yeah, the giant, like, I don't care. The you know? puppets, the giant minarets <laughs> yeah. that are just walking around. Then it's like, you know, they got something going on at Tim Hortons. You might want to check that out. And But are, the people who ran it were, lo- were big comedy fans. It's just like, it's kind of weird that that kind of fell apart. Yeah, so. and it did kind of suddenly. Yeah, really. I mean, I was up there last year and the year before and you didn't think it was, it was like booming. Oh well, it was really well maybe they'll re you know reboot it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm sure they got some big minds. I heard they're talking to the guy who started WeWork <laughs> and this FTX guy. <laughs> all, they're getting all the big brains. Yeah, the Fry into Fest it. guy he yeah. wants in. <laughs> um, the special hot cross buns, March 16th on Netflix. It's March great. 26th. Yes, and Dan, we don't spend enough time, but when we do, it's awesome. So thank you. Congrats to you and your lady. I truly think you are one of the greatest comedians of all time. You are my favorite, one of my favorite comedians of all time. Hulk Hogan loves you. Thank you. Uh, so we do this thing on the I didn't pod. know you were a child psychologist. Uh, I'm a, like, I'm a, I'm a, yeah. pick, a, pick, a, pick a character off the thing. Who are Who's you? Who's your dad and who are you? <laughs> who are you? <laughs> you can tell I didn't have a father by my bookcase. And with all your analog yeah. books here. If I would have had one guy go, you, you're like a queer, I would have pulled down my little wrestling men immediately <laughs> and gone to work at a real job. David Tell, Thank this, you, brother. this special is Hot Cross Buns, March 26th on Netflix. It's one of the greatest comedians of all time. And I'm on the road, so come out and see me live that's always the best so davidtell.com davidtell.com always guys. always brings awesome comics with him like louis katz ian fidance oh so many cool ones uh i don't know why i said ian's name all fucked up ian fidance um check him out he's the best thank you